morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, most of the presentation I'm going to comment are dedicated to directly or indirectly to portal hypertension and would like to uh, recall the fact that portal hypertension is uh, a consequence, an important consequence of cirrhosis of the liver. And uh, in turn, portal hypertension is a, is a cause of further severe and sometimes deadly complications for patients with cirrhosis. Therefore, any effort has been made to uh, reduce portal hypertension and to measure portal hypertension because if we are measuring portal hypertension properly, we, have, uh, we uh, are able to identify those patients at risk of developing uh, cirrhosis-related events. And uh, uh, we have been using for decades non-selective beta blockers uh, uh, to lower portal pressure and to lower the risk of bleeding from uh, esophageal uh, varices. And uh, uh, we thought that the effect we were uh, obtaining were closely related to the cardiovascular effect of these drugs. And uh, in fact, these drugs uh, lower uh, cardiac output, uh, and through this way, they lower the amount of blood which is reaching the splanking circulation, therefore decreasing portal pressure. Uh, this study that comes from uh, Vienna uh, is showing you uh, and us that uh, non-selective beta blocker may act also through a different pathway. And in particular, patients with cirrhosis taking non-selective beta blocker improve their intestinal permeability, which is abnormally increased in patients with cirrhosis possibly due to the effect of portal hypertension. Increased, port, uh, uh, increased intestinal permeability is important because uh, it favors uh, the so-called bacterial translocation, so the systemic spread of intestinal bacteria and uh, bacterial products, such as uh, uh, endotoxin, bacterial DNA. And this systemic spread is bringing along an immunological response with an increased production of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and these in turn has hemodynamic effects, as uh, effect on the coagulation and so on. And what was very interesting in this study is, is that along with improvement in intestinal uh, permeability, there was a reduction in the circulating levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, demonstrated that this mechanism is possibly, possibly into action. And even more important, that patients who underwent a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as interleukin-6, had a lower incidence of portal hypertension-related bleeding. So uh, uh, beta blockers uh, reduce the risk of bleeding, not only through their hemodynamic effect, but also by modulating uh, the translocation of bacterial products. And another interesting finding of this study is that these effects on intestinal permeability and bacterial translocation were obtained irrespective of the cardiovascular effect. So, I mean, these drugs are acting through different ways, possibly intestinal motility or modulation of local immunity. As I told you, uh, to have a, a reliable measure of portal hypertension is important because this helps us in identifying patients at risk of developing complications. And uh, this study uh, that comes from uh, the University of Bologna, and Professor Festi is here with us, uh, is dealing with this topic because uh, up to now, we have a reliable mean to measure portal pressure uh, through the calculation of uh, hepatic venous pressure gradient. Uh, but this is, a technique, is it, this is an invasive technique that require catheterization of hepatic veins. 
So for the last year, uh, 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 scientists have been looking for alternative mean of having, of assessing portal hypertension through non-invasive approaches. Among these, the evaluation of uh, liver uh, elastography through fibro scan has given promising results. But these uh, uh, investigators uh, uh, put into a mirror the spleen. The spleen is here, you saw. Here we have the porter system. Here the cirrhotic liver. The cirrhotic liver uh, makes a sort of barrage to the uh, blood flow, so the pressure is increasing in this district, and the spleen is uh, um, undergo a congestion. As a matter of fact, splenomegaly is a common feature of patients with cirrhosis. And the aim of this study was to compare the performance of the evaluation of liver and spleen stiffness compared to the gold standard, the measurement of the uh, hepatic venous pressure gradient in predicted clinical com uh, complication in compensated cirrhosis. Excuse me. As a matter of fact, the results were that in the univariate analysis, the gold standard liver stiffness, spleen stiffness, and melt were predictor of clinical events. But the, in the multivariate analysis, the independent predictive factors were actually spleen stiffness and melt. And their combination make, uh, I mean, allow us to use a very powerful predictive tool. Uh, now we move to uh, a different field, but uh, always related to portal hypertension, that means hepatic encephalopathy. And uh, uh, this study comes from uh, a nasal uh, chronic liver failure consortium, which was founded uh, three years ago. And now we are starting to see the result of this collaboration between many European centers. And I, I was alluding that we are dealing uh, uh, with uh, um, portal hypertension um, and uh, uh, um, hepatic encephalopathy, which is a neuropsychiatric syndrome, which is due to the simultaneous failure of the liver in clearing gut-derived toxins, and uh, from the fact that because of portosystemic shunt, gut-derived toxins can access the systemic circulation, and ultimately, the brain. Among these toxins, ammonia play an important role. And sometimes, some patients developed a chronic, invalidating, and difficult to treat encephalopathy. And there were some suggestions from uh, Olivier Origio from Rome some years ago, that in these cases, there were large porto systemic shunts. And so large portosystemic shunt, either spontaneous, like in this case, or iatrogenic, as in patient with transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt, can induce a chronic and difficult to treat hepatic encephalopathy. The author of this study addressed the issue whether it could be possible to uh, make these patients improve by closing the shunt through embolization and whether this could be done safely. And uh, the results were quite good. Uh, in the short term, within 10 days, 60% of these patients with chronic invalidating encephalopathy were free of the symptoms and almost half uh, were uh, free of the symptoms in a longer period of observation, and almost 80% actually improved their encephalopathy. So this treatment is effective. Is it also safe? Uh, possibly yes. No mortality, just taking into account we are dealing with patients with very advanced cirrhosis. Uh, eight uh, procedures-related uh, uh, complications, and that they were mild. And in the long term, we have not uh, um, any, any, any problem in terms of uh, worsening of uh, 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 
hypertensive gastropathy, gastroesophageal viruses, and so on. So the conclusion was that uh, this method is feasible, effective, and safe. Um, and they also were able to identify, however, that patients who are going to benefit more from this technique are those with a sufficient functional uh, reserve uh, identify with a MEL score equal or below 11. Um, I alluded to the fact that TIPS can also uh, induce a similar clinical picture. And sometimes TIPS, because uh, is diverting the portal blood from the liver, can induce an acceleration in liver failure. And again, from uh, uh, Leuven, uh, this group addressed the problem of TIPS uh, inducing chronic encephalopathy or liver failure. Uh, I, I would like to recall you that TIPS is a stent uh, which uh, makes a communication between the uh, portal, uh, the portal vein, the right branch in general of the portal vein, with the right uh, hepatic vein. And uh, uh, in this patient, uh, who had either TIPS-induced encephalopathy or uh, TIPS-induced liver failure, uh, the narrowing of the communication through a technique, I won't comment on that, uh, uh, was able to make symptoms improve. Uh, encephalopathy improved in 71% of patients with chronic encephalopathy, and uh, liver failure was somehow uh, stopped in half of patients. So stand reduction with this technique, parallel technique, improved chronic encephalopathy, refractory to the medical treatment, and uh, uh, improve liver function, especially when made very early, uh, as soon as the symptoms of liver failure were evident of the tips. And the final uh, the final study, again, comes from the Chronic Liver Failures uh, uh, Consortium. And the first uh, uh, big study uh, from the consortium, uh, who enrolled more than 1,300 patients, uh, aimed uh, at uh, uh, defining, uh, studying the, the development and the outcome of the so-called acute on chronic liver failure have just been published in gastroenterology. And these data come from that study and are related to the definition of a new prognostic score. In fact, patients with uh, acute and chronic liver failure are patients with cirrhosis who, developed, who develop a, a sudden deterioration of their condition. Uh, we have pronoxy score, we have typo, we have MELT score and the score derived from the MELT, but we also know that they do not perform uh, uh, very well in acutely ill patients. Therefore, in this context, um, quite often are used different score systems, which are used in general uh, in, the, in the setting of intensive care unit such as the sequential organ failure assessment, SOFA is the acronym score. And, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, the, the aim of this study, it was to identify uh, a new score, which has been uh, called the uh, 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 Cliff uh, C, uh, that means Cliff Consortium, based on the SOFA, uh, and reach of variables which are not included in this score system, uh, such as age, such as presence of ascites, such as presence of hyponatremia. And as a matter of fact, either in the short term, 28-day mortality, 90-day mortality, in the medium and long term, 180-day mortality, 365-day mortality, the performance, the prognostic power of the Cliff C index was superior to that of the standard MELT 
or the melt sodium, especially in the long term. So in conclusion, uh, uh, I would uh, summarize as follows. In addition to proving portal hypertension, beta blockers can also reduce bacterial translocation, which might widen indication for the use of these drugs in this testing setting. Spleen stiffness measurement predicts the occurrence of clinical complication, and this, as I explained to you, is very important in clinical practice. Large spontaneous portosystemic shunts can be safely and effectively embolized to treat chronic protracted uh, 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 hepatic encephalopathy. And stand reduction with the parallel technique, I've seen Professor Never is here, and he can eventually answer to the detail of the technique. Uh, mm, this technique improves chronic encephalopathy induced by TIPS and halt the progression of liver failure induced by TIPS. And finally, this uh, Cliff C consortium predicts mortality, more accuracy of the other uh, prognostic uh, uh, system we have uh, in patients with acute and chronic liver failure. Thank you.